and wrestling fans of the world, it's your boy Mega Crasher coming at you pumped up, coming at you hardcore, and coming at you guys with another WWE video. Now, for those of you guys who are WWE fans, you would know that WWE Backlash is taking place tonight, man, and I'm so excited, woo! But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, I present you guys with a WWE predictions video as to what I think is going to take place and who I think is going to win their respective matches on tonight's pay-per-view. Now, please keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, this is just my opinion and my opinion only. So if you guys do have differing opinions, then please comment down below and let me know your side of things. Because I'm so curious to see what you guys have to say about tonight's pay-per-view and what you guys think will take place. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, let's get the show on the road! Let's say for 20 likes, don't forget to turn on notifications so that way you're the first to know when you see me upload next. And let's do this! Woo! Alright, ladies and gentlemen, so before I actually go any further here with this video, I need to let you guys know that I'm going to be reading these matches in order based off of the list that Wikipedia has. So, these matches may or may not be a little bit out of order. I know that right after the pre-show match, they have the WWE Championship match in second place already. So, uh, just to let you guys know, that's likely not going to be the case where it's going to be the opening match. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, what we got going on here, the first match is actually going to be the pre-show match between Ty Dillinger and Aiden English. Now, I'm thinking, okay, if you guys remember back a couple weeks ago when the last time these two faced off, Ty Dillinger beat Aiden English, but what happened after the match? Like, why did he have such an emotional breakdown? I mean, what is WWE trying to do with Aiden English and with that sort of gimmick? I mean, I don't exactly understand it. I mean, I know Aiden English uh, described it a little bit better uh, the next time that we saw him on next week's episode, but I'm still just kind of wrap, trying to wrap my head around this. Like, why is WWE doing this to Aiden English? I mean, what are they trying to accomplish with this, you know? Uh, I heard some rumors saying that they're trying to do this as a rib, as a way to make fun of uh, Maru Ranallo, uh, who recently left WWE because of JBL's bullying. Uh, which I'm just thinking to myself, like, holy fuck, like, WWE is all about, uh, anti-bullying, yet there's this shit still going on, and I'm just like, okay, like, that, like, if that is the case, that is a fucking low blow, but, uh, that right there is, like I said, is just rumors, it's just allegations, I mean, we can't exactly prove what is what, so, uh, getting back on track right here, so, I'm thinking that in the rematch tonight, one of two things is gonna happen, either A, Ty Dillinger is going to once again beat Aiden English, and Aiden English is going to have even worse of a, an emotional breakdown, or maybe Aiden English will get lucky and pull the victory over on Ty Dillinger, and he'll get over-emotional when it comes to victory, because uh, I've also heard some speculation to say that uh, maybe his gimmick is going to be more over-emotional and over-embellishing kind of thing, where it's like, if he loses, he has an emotional breakdown and he throws tantrums, or if he was to win, he would have an emotional breakdown and, like, yeah, you know, celebrate as if he won the Olympic Championships or some shit like that. Uh, so I'm thinking that, uh, well, see, I can't bet against the perfect 10 Ty Dillinger, so I'm gonna go with him, okay? I am rooting for him. I definitely think that Ty Dillinger does have Aiden English's number, and this right here is a way to build him up. Plus, I really love his finisher, too. Like, I can't exactly explain it, but it looks so awesome. So, anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be it for match number one. It is now time to get on to the main card, and let's do this. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, so I'm actually going to be reading the Wikipedia list from the bottom to the top because it would make a little bit more sense in terms of order because I think they got the whole thing fucking backwards up in this. But anyways, the first match on the main card that we're going to be talking about is going to be the two big boys, the two former members of the Wyatt family, Luke Harper versus Eric Rowan. And I just got to say, I am particularly excited for this match, okay? I mean, it's Luke Harper, okay? Like, Luke Harper is so awesome. Like, he is so over with the crowd. Come on, WWE. Give him the push he deserves. Give him a fucking title run, man. Come on, bro. But anyways, man, let's get back on track. You're really gonna stop getting off track up in this. So, I'm thinking that these two big boys are gonna be slugging it out. They're gonna be going back and forth, left, right, and center, man. The thing of it is, is that they faced off with each other before. Uh, Eric Rowan uh, beating Luke Harper. Luke Harper beating Eric Rowan. Uh, and most recently, their most recent encounter actually took place on SmackDown, where Eric Rowan actually ended up 
beating Luke Harper via a thumb to the eye. Uh, so he kind of cheated a little bit. So I'm thinking that in their rematch from SmackDown, Luke Harper is going to get his victory. He's going to get his revenge. And he's going to set things right. And hopefully, speaking of setting things right, this right here will propel him into a title run, man. Come on. Luke Harper is just, he's, he's Luke Harper. He is awesome. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you guys think about that in the comment section down below. And now coming up next, ladies and gentlemen, we have match number two. And by match number two, I'm talking about the second match on the main card coming in the form of Baron Corbin versus Sami Zayn. Holy shit, who would have thought that this match would have taken place? Holy hell. Like, I can't wait to see this match either, okay? You got Baron Corbin, who is, like, he is just so good. Like, the guy, the guy is a really solid monster heel. I mean, holy hell. Like, I, I, I like the guy. I really like him. He needs to have a damn title run, just like Luke Harper does, man. Now, he's going up against Sami Zayn, a fellow Canadian, just like your boy, and... The thing of it is, I love Sami Zayn. I love his enthusiasm. I love his character. The never say die attitude. All that stuff, man. Oh, man. <laughs> I just gotta say, this match is so, so hard to call right down the middle. Like, I don't, I, I don't want to bet against either of them, okay? Like, I don't want to bet against Corbin because I like him. And I don't want to bet against Sammy because I like him. And he's also a fellow Canadian, too. So I'm just like, fuck. Okay, so if I was to guess what would, what would take place and who would win, is that... I'm th uh, sorry, my voice just cracked. I'm thinking is that uh, one of two things, okay? Either Baron Corbin is going to have a dominant victory over Sami Zayn and beat him one, two, three uh, with the end of days, or Sami Zayn could, you know, he could reach down in the bowels of his heart, his underdog heart, and he could overcome Baron Corbin. And the thing of it is, is that it can be done. I mean, hell, he had his feuds with the likes of Braun Strowman, okay? And he's emerged victorious before, even though it was a 10-minute match. And if uh, if Braun Strowman couldn't beat Sami Zayn within 10 minutes, then Sami Zayn would have won it, which I thought was a little bit of a weird stipulation back in Roadblock and all that shit. But the thing is, is that Sami Zayn it has that never-say-die attitude. So... If I was to put place money on this shit, my money would in fact have to be on Sami Zayn because the thing of it is, is that there's that saying, man, is that it's not always about the size of the dog in the fight, it's about the size of the fight in the dog, and Sami Zayn has the size of a fucking pit bull when it comes to the fight, man. Like, he is huge! Now, of course, he does have a formidable task ahead of him being Baron Corbin, man, and... Woo! Man, that match is going to be a slobber knocker, as JR would say. So, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and move on to match number three. All right. This right here is the match that I have been looking forward to the most. Well, actually, no, 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 no. I can't say that exactly. Uh, it is tied with one other match here on the card, which I'll be going into a little bit later on here. But it's Shinsuke Nakamura versus Dolph Ziggler. Holy fuck, man. Holy shit. Like, I just got to say, I... I, 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 uh, I can't even talk because I'm so hyped for this, man. Like, Shinsuke Nakamura, okay? Like, the face of NXT. Like, the guy is just so awesome. His in-ring work ethic, like, his style, just everything. Like, holy shit. And, like, the thing is, is, like, he, 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 he's got the it factor, okay? He's got what it takes to be the next WWE champion. I mean, hell, if he can be a two-time WWE NXT champion, he can win the big one on the main roster. There's no doubt about that, man. But he's going up against Dolph Ziggler, a former world champion, former multi-time intercontinental champion, U.S. champion, all that stuff. Holy shit. And Dolph Ziggler kind of reminds me of Shawn Michaels in a way. You know, with the super kick, with the attire, the uh, high-flying style, and all that stuff. I mean, it's going to be a fast-paced, high-flying matchup with a lot of intensity, with a lot of egos flaring up. It's just, it's going to be crazy. It is going to be crazy, man. But this right here is a pretty big no-brainer when it comes to who is going to win. Shinsuke Nakamura has to win. I mean, it's his first match on the SmackDown brand, man. And if they were to book him to lose against Dolph Ziggler, I mean, that right there would kind of just fizzle out Nakamura's momentum, okay? Now, I, that, that's nothing against Dolph Ziggler, man. But the thing of it is, man, is that, like, that's not how you book newcomers on the main roster. I mean, you take a look back 
at uh, uh, last year when AJ Styles made his WWE Raw debut against Chris Jericho and won the damn thing. That match was an absolute amazing classic, okay? So this match is also going to be a classic. Like, that's just my best guess. Uh, with Shinsuke Nakamura coming out on top. So, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, it's now time to get into the next match. Now, of course, the next match comes in the form of the six women tag team matchup, baby. We have ourselves Naomi, the SmackDown champion. We have ourselves Charlotte Flair and Becky Lynch versus the welcoming committee, that being Natalia, Carmella, and Tamina. A very weird trio and combination indeed, man. Like, I never would have thought that that would have happened, like, to say the least, man. I mean... Holy hell. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, so this matchup right here, I mean, it came about, uh, you know, it's like, it stemmed several weeks back when there was like attacks left, right, and center, you know, uh, Natalia, Camaro, uh, Carmella, and Tamina were, uh, you know, attacking Naomi, attacking Charlotte Flair, Becky Lynch, and they even had a tag team match where uh, Naomi, and, I think it was Naomi and Charlotte Flair versus uh, Natalia and uh, Carmella. And unfortunately, uh, they ended up losing, and uh, Natalia and Carmella actually ended up winning. Um, so I'm thinking at this point right here, it's like, you know, there, there's been all these times where the welcoming committee has got one over on the good guys. They have got one over on Naomi, Show Flair, and Becky Lynch. But the thing of it is, though, man, is that it is crunch time. It is WWE big time backlash time, okay? This is where the lights are on the brightest. It's a pay-per-view, man. And I'm definitely thinking that Naomi, Charlotte Flair, and Becky Lynch will get a much-deserved victory over the welcoming committee. Because the thing of it is, is that, like, when you build up, uh, you know, a villain and a good guy, of course the villain is going to end up having, uh, you know, their moments where they're going, they seemingly have the good guy's number over and over and over and over again as the weeks pass by. And I'm thinking that the way that they're booking it right now, I'm thinking that uh, the good guys are, in fact, going to get their vengeance. They're going to get their victory over the welcoming committee. But that, of course, is just my opinion. I'm more or less speaking from a booking perspective. But if I was to personally invest myself into this match, I would want Naomi Sharp Flair Becky Lynch to win. Because Naomi is freaking awesome, man. I mean, my God. Like, she is absolutely amazing. Charlotte Flair, what else can you say about her? She's Ric Flair's daughter, and Charlotte Flair is just awesome. Like, just top to bottom awesome. And then you got my girl, Becky Lynch, who is just an absolute fired up... Like, I just don't even know, like, what to say about her. She's so awesome. So, <laughs> I'm definitely rooting for them on a personal level. So, uh, from both professional and personal, my money is on Naomi, Charlotte Flair, and Becky Lynch. So now, ladies and gentlemen, we get on to the next match. So now, ladies and gentlemen, we get on to the other match that, in my opinion, is going to steal the show, just like Shinsuke and Dolph. This match right here, Kevin Owens versus AJ Styles for the WWE United States Championship. Holy fuck, that is a dream match and then some, man. Like, that right there is main event level. That is main event level. And I just gotta say, like, these two individuals are super big on the indies, and then here they are making it to the big times in WWE, having a main event level match with a with a prestigious title on the line. Now, of course, it is the very first time that these two have, in fact, faced off against one another, uh, and I'm just like, whoa, man, this is going to get big, this is going to get pop, and I just can't wait to see this, man, holy shit! So... If I was to hazard my guess, if I was to say who I thought was going to win, holy fuck. It's going to be so hard because I love Kevin Owens. Like, the guy is just, dude, he's got the it factor without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, and AJ Styles, I mean, it's AJ motherfucking Styles, man. You can't bet against the guy either. Like, holy hell. So, oh man, jeez. Like, this this, this is going to be really hard to, to, to call. This is going to be really hard to call, man. I mean... I wouldn't be disappointed no matter what the outcome is because, uh, you know, Kevin Owens is, he's bringing a lot of prestige into that belt just like uh, Chris Jericho did. And, like, the thing is, like, they're doing something right with the United States Championship. Like, you know, they're having matches with it. You know, they're putting it on the right guys uh, that can really, uh, you know, boost the prestige of the belt. Uh, just like the Miz boosted the prestige of the Intercontinental Championship as much as I hate the guy. Uh, <laughs> 
dude, dude, he he is a great bad guy, okay? Uh, and same with Kevin Owens. I mean, he really, really knows what he's doing. And AJ Styles, the face that runs the place, the champ that runs the camp, also knows what he is doing. This match is going to be great. Now, <laughs> on to the, the, the decision time, man. So, who do I think is going to win? I'm thinking that Kevin Owens is going to retain the championship uh, because of the fact that he's likely going to pull a dirty move uh, to take advantage of the situation, uh, you know, either distract AJ Styles or, you know, take advantage of, this, of AJ Styles being distracted by something or by distra distracted by the referee. Maybe some outside interference, I don't even know. But by hook or crook, I'm thinking Kevin Owens is in fact going to retain the title because he's done that before. I mean, hell, like, look at who he's faced up against. Like, uh, there was that Roadblock and Royal Rubble. He faced off against Roman Reigns, okay? And uh, th that, that, that's, the, that's the guy that they were pushing to be the next John Cena. Uh, so I'm thinking that because of uh, the way that they've uh, booked Kevin Owens in the past and the way that they're booking him now, I'm thinking that Kevin Owens is going to get one over on AJ Styles. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a bad thing because this right here could be an epic saga uh, between Kevin Owens and AJ Styles as they're feuding over the WWE United States Championship, you know, adding more prestige, adding more interest into the title belt. Woo! Holy hell, this is going to be awesome. So, with all of that being said, though, ladies and gentlemen, um, it also wouldn't surprise me, though, if AJ Styles was to actually overcome Kevin Owens and beat him cleanly in the middle of the ring, uh, and actually have, well, I was going to say win his first WWE Championship belt, but uh, let's not forget, ladies and gentlemen, he was actually the WWE Champion in 2016 going into the Royal Rumble 2017. So uh, this will actually be his second ever WWE title belt if he was to win against Kevin Owens. But now, ladies and gentlemen, speaking of championships, it's now time to move on to the next match. So now the next match is something that I... <laughs> Something that I honestly didn't think was going to happen. We got the Usos, the WWE Tag Team Champions, versus Breezango. That being Tyler Breeze and Fandango. Um, okay, okay. That's just, that's, that's a little bit, that's a little bit of an odd matchup here. I kind of, I kind of was, uh, wasn't sure if this match was going to happen, but I guess it is. Uh, and the thing of it is, is that Tyler Breeze and Fandango have been treated like the job squad for the longest damn time. Now, for those of you guys that don't know the term job, or jobber, basically means that you're jobbing out to uh, bigger superstars, you know, getting them over, constantly losing all that shit, making yourself look stupid and whatnot. <coughs> but the thing of it is, though, is that these guys are getting a championship opportunity. So I'm thinking they're probably going to push Tower Breeze and Fandango somewhere because, hey, they're, 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 they're getting a fucking title shot, right? And I mean, the thing of it is, is that, like, if we take a look back at Heath Slayer and Rhino, uh, Heath Slater was a jobber for the longest time, right? For the longest time. And then he paired up with Rhino, and they actually became the first ever WWE SmackDown Tag Team Champions. So, yeah. I mean, I'm just like, holy hell. Like, if that could be done, then perhaps maybe, just maybe, Breezango could actually get out of the jobber's darkness and go into the light and be the new champions. But the thing of it is, they're facing up against Usos, and I love the Usos! Like, holy hell, the Usos, bro! Like, they're, they've been killing it on the tag team scene, man. Like, I absolutely love those guys. Woo! Holy hell, man. Like, I am just honest. I'm, I'm also pretty excited and pretty intrigued on this matchup, too. Uh, but if I was to uh, hazard a guess, I would say the Usos, they're going to retain. They're, they're, they're going to retain, okay? Nothing against Breezango, because Tyler Breeze and Fandango are actually great workers, great wrestlers. Uh, but the Usos are on a fucking roll, man. I mean, I'm thinking <clears throat> that they're going to be waiting for a very formidable tag team to step up against the Usos, and the Usos drop the belt to them. Uh, what the tag team is, I have absolutely no idea, but I'm thinking that they're going to be champions for a long time until the they get uh, the next hot tag team to overthrow them and become the new champs. You know what I'm saying? But that right there is just my opinion, ladies and gentlemen. Let me know what you guys think about that in the comment section down below. And coming up next, man, we have ourselves the main event. So let's do it, baby! And now, ladies and gentlemen, we get to the WWE Championship match. We got Randy Orton versus Jinder Mahal! And I'm just like, what the fuck? They're actually giving Jinder Mahal a fucking championship opportunity? They're giving him a push? I'm like, yes! Yes, what the hell, man? Like, 
like, okay, see, here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen, is that, like, you know, there, there's been a huge trend of when it comes to WWE, you know, there's been your bona fide jobbers, and there's been your bona fide uh, superstars that WWE's been pushing down our throats and all that shit, and I'm just like, so they're actually giving these superstars that would be looked at as jobbers huge championship opportunities. I mean, hell, like, you got Breezango fighting for the tag team championships. Uh, and then you got Jinder Mahal, who used to be with 3MB, the three-man band, now in a match with Randy Orton in the main event spot for the WWE Championship. And see, he's not alone, man. He's got the Singh brothers. He's got Sunil and Samir. And I'm just like, okay, this, this, this is going to be interesting to say the least, man. And I mean, the thing is, ever since Jinder Mahal returned, his body looks like a freaking road map. Like, what the hell? Like, what did you do to yourself, Jinder? Like, holy hell. I have never seen anyone look that ripped, ever, in the WWE. Like, holy hell. Woo! And see, he's a small man, too. He's a big, big guy. He is tall. Like, holy hell. <laughs> holy shit. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen. So, oh, man. Th this match is going to be so difficult to call, but at the same time, uh, it's pretty easy to jump on the Randy Orton will win bandwagon because the thing is, is that, like, on one end, it's like, what does Randy Orton achieve if he was to drop the title to Jinder Mahal? And what would Jinder Mahal do with the WWE title? Like, how would he push it, you know? Uh, I'm thinking that, like, out of the two, the safer option, in my opinion, um, and from a professional opinion, from a booking opinion, it's likely going to be a safer option for Randy Orton to keep the title, um, but have Jinder Mahal still have a giant push and... Maybe, just maybe, uh, you know, win another championship, whether it be the United States Champion... Like, if you won the United States Championship or, you know, a tag team championship, that would also be pretty cool, too. I mean, the thing is, I like Jinder Mahal, okay? Like, the guy, like, he, he came back for a reason, okay? He came back for a reason. He's looking better than ever. You know, he's in great shape. Uh, the WWE's pushed him into the main event level, so they obviously see something in him. So, I'm thinking that maybe, just maybe, uh, you know, Randy Orton is going to retain the title, but at the same time, you know, WWE has pulled major swerves on us in the past, and it honestly wouldn't surprise me whatsoever if Jinder Mahal somehow won the WWE Championship from Randy Orton. But the thing is, from a booking perspective, what would that do for Jinder Mahal? How would Jinder Mahal carry the title and, you know, be booked with it? And, you know, to be able to be booked as a strong heel in that in that regard, you know? Woo! Oh, my God. This is going to be one intense match. And I just got to say, this, this pay-per-view is actually looking pretty damn good, if I do say so myself, man. Oh, my God. But... You know, like I said, I'm thinking that Randy Orton is, in fact, going to win. Because, I mean, hey, like, if you can beat somebody like Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania, who, in my opinion, should have kept the damn title because it was his time, man. Like, why can't you give Bray Wyatt his WWE moment, man, his WrestleMania moment, for God's sakes. But, anyways, the thing is, I also love Randy Orton. The guy, the guy is absolutely awesome. He is a slithering monster, and I absolutely love it, so... Randy Orton, uh, you know, my, my, in my books, he's going to win the uh, the champion. He's going to retain the championship, win the match. And, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about that. So let me know what you guys think about that in the comment section down below. And that right there is going to conclude this video. So I certainly hope that you guys enjoyed the video. And if you guys did, man, then make sure you smash the hell out of the like button. Like I said at the beginning of the program, let's say for 20 likes. And if you want more content like this, then make sure you subscribe, support, and stay positive. And don't forget to turn on notifications because YouTube is broken. And it kind of sucks freezer dry nuts right now. But with that being said, ladies and gentlemen... Uh, that's pretty much all I have to say, so thank you guys very much for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to our community. We are a community that is packed with a whole bunch of energy, whole bunch of insanity, a whole bunch of hype, entertainment, inspiration, and appreciation all around, man. And we're also a, a community that's tightly packed and tightly as one, and we shine much brighter than the sun and the moon combined, so thank you very much for watching. Much love to you cool cats, and I will see you next upload!